big stories of the day. Candice Holdsworth, the writer and broadcaster, is with us. Uh, I mean, you're not American either, Candice, so no. it just does, they, we don't get a say in all of this, but we do yeah. uh, have the, the fallout of this, if you like. You know, there is a global um, resonance to whoever gets the big job. It matters. Oh, of course. I mean, the, the United States is still the world's dominant power. They play a crucial yeah. role in everything. I mean, look at everything that's been happening in the Middle East and in Ukraine. I mean, America has been the deciding force. Whatever America does is seen to influence everything. And, you know, Zelensky goes to the U.S. Congress to get the weapons. And when he couldn't get when, when the U.S. said no, he didn't get them. Um, they sent big ships to the Middle East to stop conflict breaking out. I mean, yep. Joe Biden's been the one pushing the whole sort of negotiation strategy. I mean, everyone still looks to the US. And when they step back, like they did under the Obama years, then it, the vacuum gets filled with others. Yeah, indeed. Well, let's have a little listen then. The final pitches have been made. The polls are open. Trump and Kamala, Kamala both predicting victory in the final day. It's in our hands, right? It's in our hands. It's totally in our hands. Oh, it's today. Oh, it's today. Oh. Our campaign has tapped into the ambitions, the aspirations, and the dreams of the American people. And we know it is time for a new generation of leadership in America. Well, she whined a lot. He just spoke a lot, Candice. Apparently went on for about 17 hours in that last rally. I think people were wondering whether they were there for the whole night. Uh, but there it is. That's, that's the, that they can do no more now. It's down to the yes. polls. There is a suggestion that it could be, some are saying, it could be days before we, we find out the full result. It's going to be that close. Yes, I mean, kind of a rerun of 2020 where everyone's sort of trying to figure out what's yeah. an obscure county in Nevada, how they've voted. I mean, places you've never heard of before, but which suddenly have this enormous significance. I mean, I don't think I'd ever heard of Maricopa County before. Maricopa <laughs> was, like, County! Hanging on to, like, down to the wire to see yeah, how they yeah. voted. Yeah. Which is just incredible. It really is. I think that the nation is very split. America is very split. We know mm. this. So, I mean, that's reflected in the polls as well. We know that there's a gender divide. I mean, the Democrats have absolutely hammered this about women. Um, and I know that Trump has been trying to get young men to come out because men have sort of started leaning Republican and women have started leaning Democrat. It's interesting, isn't it, that that, that is how it seems to divide up and they're both... Uh, that they both spent the last day really trying to galvanise those uh, specific bases. Uh, the polls are interesting because polls, schmolls, you know, they, they for years yeah. sort of been all over the place. Polling has got a lot more accurate in recent times, but I think something very specific is happening in America because the, the, the problem with pollsters, if they are wildly out, that's their entire business model down the drain. Yes. Um, that they, they can lose millions if they get it wrong. And I sort of sense they're all kind of the pollsters are all watching each other going well okay we don't you know we, we obviously need to maintain our model uh, of, of accuracy yes. or however we do it and some come out in favor of Trump and some come out in favor of Harris but yes. we don't want to be so far out that we look as if we, we're going to get it wrong so they've all been very similar and I wonder what the methodology is that's yes. sort of unless they are that close I mean the, according to the sort of polls of polls there is a narrow lead for Harris in those swing states Pennsylvania Michigan Wisconsin mm. uh, but who the hell knows we don't. We don't. I mean, all the pollsters I've spoken to have said a toss-up. Some have said it's going towards Harris. Some have said it's going towards Trump. Yeah. It kind of makes sense if you look at what happened in 2020, where it was so close. I mean, you can imagine the same trends building. I think in 2016, Donald Trump sort of had the novelty factor. But he also, I mean, he really targeted states like um, Michigan and Wisconsin, and he managed to turn the electoral college in his favor. But I think eight years on from that, people have sort of gotten used to Trump a bit more. There is some who actually quite like him now, but he doesn't have the same novelty factor that he once had, you know, sort of really argue that he was the big difference. Yeah. Now he is kind of like trying to actually stage a political comeback. I saw a clip of him before the 2016 election, and this really took me by surprise. The one that he obviously went on to win. Um, I couldn't believe how much younger he looked. Now, I know it was eight years ago. But I, I just hadn't seen this particular clip and I thought, well, he genuinely look. I mean, of course, he's, a, you know, he's an older guy. Some yes. would say that's a good thing. He's got more experience. Uh, yes. But I, I, that's clearly, 
you know, marked him out now, hasn't it, from Harris, whereas before he was up against Sleepy Joe, that, who looked about yeah. 176 and could hardly string a sentence together. And then, of course, she comes along, who's much younger. I mean, all the criticism we would make of her, she, you know, she, she's, she's just a younger person. It's as simple mm. as that. Um, so he is an older guy, but, you know, for some people, that's why he's the best person placed to lead the country. Yes, Experience. and I think... Yes, I mean, I think people that age are still dominating politically yeah. in the US. What we do know with the generation below, this is Harris's generation, people in their 50s and 60s, the so-called Gen X, they have the lowest representation in US politics. I mean, that's a generation that sort of, you know, didn't think that, you know, politics was the way that you changed the world. Yeah. The, the sort of the best and the brightest went into entrepreneurship and tech. And what I find really fascinating is they tend to lean Republican, that, that generation, mm -hmm. and you see all the big tech billionaires like Bill Ackman and Elon Musk, for instance, coming out in favor of Donald Trump, yep. which you didn't actually see eight years ago, but now they're sort of the generation that's in charge of everything, yep. and they lean very right, and they're starting to be very open about what they think and what they believe. Yeah, well, I mean, I think with, with Elon Musk and others, it's, it's probably good for their business models to have him rather than yeah. her in the big seat. Let's move to this story. Keir Starmer vowing to renegotiate a Brexit deal to secure a new security pact in a bid to do this. You will have helped to smash the gangs, secure our borders and save countless lives. Smash the criminal gangs, and they are criminal gangs, that are running this vile trade and putting people in the boats. Take those gangs down. But I think smashing the gangs that are taking people's money is a deterrent. I think you have to smash those gangs. The only way to stop that is to smash the gangs that are running this vile trade. Smash, 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 smash the gangs. Uh, I don't know if you caught that message, Candice, but uh, he wants to smash the gangs. I mean, we're only really covering this story as an excuse to play that clip again because we yes. love it so much. Uh, but apparently, in order to smash the gangs and stop the channel boats, you've got to renegotiate the Brexit deal. I mean, I is this know. guy taking me for some kind of fool? I think so. I think he's just determined to save this, this idea that he has, which mm. a lot of people are now starting to call a gimmick, the smash the gangs, which no one thinks is going to work. If you only look at the supply and not the demand, it ain't going to work. Correct. I mean, very hard-nosed people who've worked in, in, in international crime and understand about these things all say you have to understand that the people aren't just put into the boats, they get into the boats. They have agency. I mean, you can actually influence their decisions. It's not just, you know, smuggling gangs, just grabbing people and shoving them onto boats like the child snatcher. I mean, these are people who pay. They pay huge sums of money, yep. so you have to disincentivize them from doing so. Indeed. Uh, no chance, I think, is the, uh, the, the short answer to that. And another day, another backflip for the Prime Minister, this time on tuition fees. Let's remind ourselves what Keir Starmer said before the election. Tuition fees is a huge debt for young people that they carry with them for a very long time. And that's why we rightly committed at last election to get rid of tuition fees. What about Starting university with... tuition fees then? Will you remain committed to scrapping them in They're your first term? pledges, Andrew. So the answer to these questions is yes. So university tuition fees being scrapped will be in a Starmer manifesto? Yes, that's why it's in the next pledge. election. OK. Me going to universities, the first of my family, was an incredible thing for my family because it was part of that ordinary hope of working class families. On tuition fees, I felt very, very strongly um, that one thing that benefited me greatly was not having tuition fees. Yeah, now we've got them and he's putting them up, Candice. I mean, it's as simple as that. We've got the receipts of, of Mr yeah. Starmer, uh, him talking about farmers, him talking about tuition fees, him talking about winter fuel. I mean, I've heard of a reverse ferret. This fella's got a... Pe what did he do at university? Reversal? What the hell was going on? Because this is another example of a, a backflip um, in, in spectacular fashion. He's not only not getting rid of them, he's raising them. Yes. Yeah, this is it's, this is, it's this kind of ruthless shift that he specialises in. He says he said what he needed to say to sort of oppose the Conservatives. And what a lot of people do, like Labour and the Lib Dems, they just try and portray the Conservatives for making these choices as evil. They do it because they're bad. And then they get into power and they kind of make the same decisions. I mean, me personally, I think raising tuition fees was a real disaster for people my age. I know so many people now in their mid to late 30s who have high housing costs, high childcare costs, yep. and they're still paying off these huge 
sums of money for their degrees and they're starting to pay the higher rates of tax now because they're getting older and they're getting more experienced and they're on thin 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 margins and that student loan that they have to pay off is such a weight around their neck it really is absolutely listen let's move to a final story here candice and we've all seen these kind of warnings before when watching a tv or a movie some viewers may find the following video disturbing viewer discretion is advised yes yeah, simple as that uh, but now a woke museum is slapping a trigger warning on wildlife photos because it shows some predators attacking prey I feel like I've just made that story up, but it's absolutely true. It's a wildlife exhibition in a Bristol museum. It's added a trigger warning because it might show some lions eating an antelope. Yes, yes. It's the total infantilization of adults. I mean, I'm not surprised that now they're applying it to nature. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you've seen it for years now with all kinds of literature and film. I mean, you saw it with Roald Dahl calling someone fat. I mean, suddenly, apparently, we're too sensitive to deal with that. So I can totally imagine, you know, the really brutal nature of predators and prey in the wild would offend yeah. people who are totally detached from reality and sort of have this, like, child's idea of how things are. I mean, apparently, there's an image of a, a tiger carrying a dead monkey. I mean, the only thing that, that should say underneath it is this is the equivalent of you walking around with a cornetto, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't think people should be offended by basic things in nature. But there we are. That's the kind of weird, upside-down world we continue yeah. to live in. Candice, thank you as ever. Candice Holdsworth, writer and broadcaster, with us on the programme.